Hi, this is Julie from Renting French Mama and today I want to show you how I made that uh, pirate cake, a pirate boat. I apologize in advance because there are some parts that are missing but there's enough um, enough shooting, I don't know if I can say that, there's enough footage that you can see uh, how I made the cake. Um, here you can see that I use four, um, four sheets of cake. So I, they're like the size of my uh, oven. So I'd say it's roughly like probably around 40 centimeters by 30. Um, I used four of them and this is because I wanted to do about 80 slices of it, which is pretty big. Um, because that cake was going to my kids school and it fed all the school and the teachers um, so um, this is why it's pretty big and it's pretty big like lots of um, slices but it's not huge also because I used kind of a brownie like a lighter version of a brownie type of cake and a chestnut spread cake which are both kind of uh, soft and moist so you can make like small slices and the good the upside of this also is that I don't need to stuff the cake. I don't need to add any um, any kind of cream or anything to make it um, nice. It just is perfect on its own. It saved me money because I paid for this cake. Uh, but you could totally do it with um, some kind of uh, buttercream or ganache or anything you like in, be in between the layers. This is just the way I made it. So uh, back onto the, the boat, I I started with the first narrow band that was the, the longest length I could use. Then the second layer I made um, something less narrow, something wider. And then I started to do the two, um, the two top parts like steps, like stays. Um, the back one being straight, it has a flat bottom because I want it to be like a cabin with some uh, windows on it. So I kept it flat, but it's still like a, like a stair underneath that flat part and the, the top part also. So here you can see it. I'm trying to do it as close to the final design as I can so I don't waste any cake. And now I'm trying to carve the cake. I did not bother for it to be um, to be level because I want it to be looking like uh, the boat is in the sea so it doesn't matter if the mast don't end up being like straight like vertical vertical so the top of the boat is not straight but aside from that I went like really symmetrical and you, you want to try to carve it as close to as best as you can really um, because any any flows that you have at this stage will show later on so I'm trying to get it as close to the final design as I can and and I'm saving all the bits of cakes that I'm carving away uh, they can be used for many things for cake pops they can be used to make sand on another cake um, to make uh, kind of earth with the chocolate one they can be used for this cake also if I have like a hole or anything I want to patch up. So all that I'm not going to use for this cake is going to be freezed, frozen, freezed, <laughs> for later use. So for the shape of the cake, I went for a pointy, um, how do you say that, not the bottom, the front, front, sorry, a pointy front and the back is flat. So I'm trying to work very slow, like, fast because I, I'm using actually I, I didn't say but I'm using frozen cake also um, the reason I'm using frozen cake is because it's a moist cake it would fall apart so I'm trying to work fast enough so that I'm still keeping it into the frozen uh, I'm carving while it's still frozen and it's easier and also because uh, for hygiene hygienic reason it keeps it in a better temperature while I'm carving it um, this is why the, the cake looks like it's dense, but it's not really. So here I went like um, on the side, I went carved in and out and then in again on the top. I hope you can see that. This is what I'm trying to show you on the video right now. Uh, flat at the back and then I did kind of a step to have like 
different levels on my boat to keep it interesting and here I'm going I'm kind of looking everywhere seeing for anything that I can fix trying to get it as neat as I can see here I'm using the, the cake on the side and I'm just patching up my cake if anyone is interested in my recipes for the chocolate cake or the chestnut spread cake, you can just leave me a comment below and I'd be more than happy to share it. Um, they're not really cheap version of cake because they use like lots of eggs and good chocolate, but I really like these two recipes. They're simple to make and they really they taste really good. So what else to say at this stage? See, yeah, there that I'm patching up because it was not high enough. So I'm cutting it, I'm cutting up pieces of cake and I'm putting it in between my layers to just to, to get it higher up. There. And, and also I used a bone that is way smaller than the one I'm gonna use at the end and I wish I hadn't had to transfer, transfer the cake afterwards. So if you can use a board that like um like a cardboard cake board that's like thin enough that you can cut into it, cut it into the shape of the cake, uh, which is what I, I ended up doing, but I had to transfer it from that board. So now about garnishing the cake, I don't like to work with buttercream, but this is a um, personal preference. I don't really like buttercream for the taste, and I think the ganache is stronger for carb cake, it works beautifully. It keeps it all together, it's a great barrier uh, underneath the, um, the fondant so that it keeps the germs away and it keeps the cake moist also because my cake, like you can keep in mind that my cake is still frozen. So adding that ganache all around it keeps the moisture inside also. Um, I worked, you can see I'm putting ganache all over the place and the reason I'm, I'm actually doing that, it's not on purpose, but it's mainly because I start to do like uh, um, a crumb coat with a very soft ganache to start with. I like to do that so it really gets into all the cracks and holes and keeps everything together and then I put it into the fridge and so it's ready for the second coat of ganache and then my ganache will be set a little better. So I'm sorry for the mess. So this is ready for the fridge, now it's out of the fridge, putting on the second layer of ganache. <clears throat> Again, I'm trying to do something as neat as I can, as close to what I want to end up with once the fondant will be over it, because um, because I want to avoid that. What I'm doing right now is that on the side, I wanted it to be wider than it was with the ganache. So if I had planned ahead better, I would have avoided that. Um, now I'm just adding two rectangles of, um, of fondant, but like half an inch, I guess, wide on both sides and that's to define the cabin bit at the back better because that's the final effect I want. So it's good to plan ahead if you can avoid that, be smarter than me. <laughs> so I try to be as as neat as I can and now I'm getting on with my, with my fondant and I got it wrong again. I put it too much at the front and too little at the back, which is not really an issue because when working with carved cake, you can always, almost over cover up your mistakes. Um, so I'm not worried about it because I'm going to add, um, I wanted to add a window at the back on the cabin. So it's going to hide all the seams. And also I'm not too worried because I'm using a mixture of the Smart Flex Velvet for, um, if you know this fondant, and also some Rancho. So I got like elasticity, but also the Rancho is so forgiving, you can really blend the seams together well. Now I'm, I'm just uh, using the simple um, straight edge straight edge um, technique on the sides and I'm trying to do it as neat as I can again. Taking my time, pinching it side by side and the angles with my fingers trying to smooth it out as I am working on it. Nice and smooth everywhere.
I'm really using my fingers also to, uh, to pinch it together when I can't reach with the smoothers or when I want it to be more defined. And I'm using um, a ruler. This is a great tool. It's like, it was actually my kid's ruler and then I she never used it because I took it for myself because it's a soft ruler. And I'm doing kind of soft angles at the back. I did not want um, straight angles at the back. Um, the soft ruler is great for many things. Here I'm going to use it again uh, to, to trace the planks on the sides of the boat. That's very handy. So here, I apologize, this is where you're not going to see much of what I did, but basically at the back on the table, you can see there is two pieces of fondant rolled out um, of different thickness and I'm going to leave them out at least 24 hours to get them to harden up. Um, sorry again. And all the, all the pieces of fondant just rolled out like long columns, which I'm going to cut out once they're uh, dried enough and I'm going to use them to do the barista on the sides of the well, all over the cake on top So here I'm going to do the moldings um, I put moldings all over my cake because I thought it looked pretty um, So I kind of used any moldings like molds that I have um, if you did not have any molds, which I doubt if you're watching this <laughs> But if you didn't, you can always do like little um, swirls and little like dots and little like snail things that looks like moldings and it would look nice also. And the great thing about this too is, so also all of that, I'm going to let it dry. Here I wanted to show you on my mold, I'm not using all the mold, I'm just using the, the bits in the middle and I'm putting a little ball of fondant and I'm, I I did tons of them and I put them all over my cake, like all around the, the windows and this this looks really nice. So if you have a mold, you can use any bits that you want. You don't have to use the whole molding. I used kind of everything I had, like I had little wings that I put around the little skull I made for the front. So you can use different ones. Um, here I'm showing you how I made the governor, the governor, the, the wheel. Let's call it the wheel. <laughs> um, so you can see that old piece of fondant I was talking to you earlier about. It's the one on the side, it's hardened up, and this is what I used for the middle of the wheel. And then I put some toothpicks cut in half, pointy side inside the, the disc I made. And then I go all around, put little balls, and then make another set of little balls, which once I insert them, I just push on them a little to make like little like um, conic things yeah. to change the shape of it. There you can see my fondant is very hard, you could not do that with soft fondant. Um, this is to make the foot of my wheel, there I'm taking my little person beside to see and to cement them together I put little bits of wet fondant and that is brilliant it's a great way to glue anything on your cake that is not soft and it's very strong so here yeah, i'm cutting around this and i'm going to to slide the foot of my wheel right there i'm going to add a little bit of fondant wet fondant to cement it all together and and now I'm just going to put it together. I used tons of toothpicks on that. I, you have to be careful if you have kids eating it. You just have to make sure that you say it. And now I'm putting it all together. Because it's uh, it's falling off, um, I'm just putting it onto a styrofoam and I'm adding a toothpick again to make it hold together. Or oh, it's a skewer, maybe a wooden skewer instead of a toothpick. And then I apologize, I don't have also, um, it doesn't show uh, when I'm going to, to paint it, but I just painted it in brown. So here you can see where I'm pointing at, it's the middle of my little moldings. I added a slide, um, so it's sliding all around it, and little cannons which are just little square with a, a ball in the middle for the cannon, with um, a pushed hole in the middle, and it looks just like a cannon pointing out. And now I want to really go with some black 
that is really wet because I wanted to get into all the bits and pieces that um, my air gun will not get to in all the cracks so it will show all the work done um, previously I also didn't show but I made a boarding like I made on the sides of the cake on the I did that again on the floor of the cake the top floor and I left uh, in white what I want to keep in brown. So I'm gonna get the dark brown where I put the, the black and then um, a brown, a simple brown where it's left, it was left in, in white. And I'm not going to show you all the airbrushing because I was afraid that it would damage my computer. So, um, because I'm taping with my computer, but you, you, you get the idea, I'm just, I went back on it. I also apologize because I did not show you how to make um, the sails. I took some wooden skewers and put fondant onto it and I put some on the sides and I attach it all with some flower wires. I did not find any other medium to make my sails hold onto the skewers. Um, so I used this, this flower, um, sorry, flower wire and some wafer paper. And there you can see it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can get something out of it. Um, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you like it. Leave me a comment if you want to. It'd be great. It's always a happy thing to see. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.